Cisco Firepower, Threat Defense 622. So this is the latest site-to-site -site VPN. We're going to focus on point-to-point. Um, so again, it's pretty uh, simple uh, configuration to get it up and running. A uh, couple steps though, and uh, we're going to walk through them. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Devices VPN Site to Site, and we're going to create a new VPN for Firepower Threat Defense. Um, and then what we're going to do is give it a, a topology name, and we'll configure Node A. In this case, uh, it is going to be point to point. Um, so we're going to grab the FTD1 device. The interface where the VPN is going to be terminated is the outside interface. And we're going to grab the object that references the protected network. And that's it. So now that we've created node A, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for node B, which happens to be FTD2 device. Again, outside interface. In our case, we are doing bi-directional. Um, so the uh, VPN tunnel can operate in both, uh, both sides and initiate it for both sides. And again, we're going to grab that protected network. Now at the bottom here, you can see a little eye, a black eye, and it says make sure that you build out the access policy. Um, you have to actually do that. We're going to do this a little bit later in, in the video. Um, so Ike V1 or Ike V2, uh, we're going to use Ike V2, and I'm going to just change the policy here. You could also just configure it yourself if you, if you wanted to. Um, and, and use additional parameters. Same thing here. Um, we can go in and add a, uh, an existing one or use the plus sign and add a custom one that's specific to our needs. Um, you can see there's a bunch of other settings that we can certainly enable um, here, but I'm just keeping the configuration as simple as possible and show you how quick and easy it is to get it up and running, at least uh, from a site-to-site -site VPN perspective. And again, some more advanced settings that you can tweak. So that's good. Uh, the one thing we are going to do here is just uh, we're going to actually set a pre-shared key manually. Let's so come back and, uh, and fix that. The one thing I do like about this as opposed to um, building out the configuration like using the CLI on traditional ASA is that the configuration is done once and pushed to both boxes. So you don't have to worry about getting IPsec proposals and correct on one side versus the other because they're consistent across them both because it's a, a single policy or configuration being pushed to both, both devices at the same time. So we're going to deploy this. Now, what you see here is an error message because I'm using the evaluation license that doesn't give me the strong crypto or encryption algorithms um, that uh, would be a val valid with a, uh, a full license. So I'm going to jump in and, and uh, license these boxes. Um, if you wanted to do this during the evaluation, what you would have to do is um, not use the advanced encryption methods. Um, so here I've just registered the device. I, I skipped a couple of, of steps there. Uh, I just wanted to show you that it is now registered. Um, now I'm going to go and and uh, try to push this policy again. And if everything's working as it should be, um, you'll see uh, some success there. So we start the deployment of the policy. And it should finish up. And there we go. So that's done. We can see now the configuration here. We see both node A and node B. Everything looks good and as expected. Now we're going to jump to NAT. Now what we have to do here is ensure that we're not NATing when we're coming from the inside to the outside when we're coming from those protected networks. So we'll do it on both devices. Um, so we'll do it on the FTD1 device first. So again, the inside interface in this case is um, selected and then we'll use the outside interface. And then we'll go to translation and we'll uh, finish up the configuration here. So anything uh, from the uh, inside network going to the inside network on the uh, FTD2 side, 
we are not going to translate it. So what we're going to do is actually select the same objects. Um, and this is going to do what we used to call uh, no nat. And we'll just grab the corresponding object here. And you can see the original source, translated source is the same. Original destination to translated destination is the same. Uh, we'll put it in the right spot here. We're going to move it up to the top. And that's it. So that takes care of NAT on one device. Obviously, we still have to push the policy. So we'll save that here. We'll go back to NAT config and we'll grab the NAT configuration for FTD2 uh, device. We'll add a rule. And it will do the exact same thing, but obviously the objects are going to be the opposite of what we used uh, originally. So the destination on the old one become the source on this one and vice versa. Looks good. Grab the interface objects. That's actually good there. This is obviously NAT policy is a little bit less than the other one. Okay, so now we have that saved out. We'll now push it. And I could have done, you know, I could have built the whole VPN structure out, come and did the NAT policy, and then and then uh, you're going to find uh, after this we'll do the access control policy. I could have done that all at once and then pushed it, pushed it all at once. Um, I'm just happening to do it in stages. Okay, so that looks good. Um, so let's just jump to events. And, and so what I did here was ignore that that explanation uh, that said, you know, you got to configure the access control or be sure to configure the access control policy. So I've done the NAT and the VPN side. I did not touch the ACLs whatsoever. So I've got a ping going, trying to, to uh, obviously start the tunnel. And uh, what I'm finding is, is that I'm not getting a response. And what we're going to see here is that we are getting block here. You can see the inside and the uh, or the inside IP and, and the inside IP address of the uh, site uh, to site VPN on the other side um, is failing. So uh, this is just to show you that you, you, you know, you, you certainly got to do that piece in order to have the tunnel success, successfully come up and pass traffic. Okay, so we'll quickly create a couple rules here. Now what we're doing here is, um, we'll give it a, a name real quick, um, but you have to think about a little bit about where the traffic is coming, right? Um, so we do know that the source is going to be coming in from a zone perspective from the outside and it's trying to access the zone on the inside. So we do know that uh, we're going to use these as qualifiers um, in our policy. And now we got to grab the source network and the destination network. So the source network is going to be the source on the other side of the VPN of the protected network um, and connecting to this site's protected network. And that's it. We'll add some logging here at the end and we'll add that policy. Now we might shuffle where that policy is, right? So we can drag and drop and move things around. It's uh, very easy to move a policy or a rule within the policy around without having to go into the, the actual rule set. So that's good. Um, now we'll go to the other device and uh, do the exact same thing, except uh, the source and destination are going to be flipped. Beautiful. So there's the outside to inside and let's grab the protected networks. 
So the source will be coming from the other side uh, and the destination is our side of this device. Log the connection. Save this out. And we should essentially at this point, once we deploy it, um, the tunnel and the tr passing of traffic should be successful. So I didn't show that NAT was being bypassed, um, but uh, you can do a show NAT um, to see that that uh, no NAT policy or you know that NAT policy that's not translating the IPs is actually working. So let's just check that host that I had that ping going to, and it should be successful now. And and here we go, we can see that it is successful. Again, just to re re um, uh, state the the configuration here for site to site, so you can see the node A and node B. Um, here we're going to check um, IPsec SA um, settings. So big things that you want to look for in here. Um, there's a couple things, but really what you want to see is the packet in caps and decaps. You want to make sure that you're seeing that uh, fairly consistent. Um, and that indicates that both sides of the tunnel are up. Um, you can also see the ACL that's assigned to it. Um, and uh, what the local identity remote identity is as well um, so there's a little uh, bit of uh, information in here that you can use to determine if uh, something's going on with the tunnel itself we'll do the same thing for ike uh, v2 sa and real quick we'll have a, a, a look at that and you can see here um, just a little snippet of information right you can see the um, local and remote um, networks you can see the um, you know the IP or the encryption the IP addressing of the remote host um, and the local host so some good information here um, and then uh, and last but not least you can add detail and get a little more information there as well So I had a little trouble with my mouse going over a remote desktop and over uh, a putty session for whatever reason. So I'm trying to click a couple of uh, interesting um, areas to look at, um, like the encryption um, settings, etc. But, but anyways, you get the gist of it. Um, there's a couple of commands that you can run on the, the CLI uh, to understand what's actually taking place. And that's it.